right, good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, September 24th, 2020. This is our regular board meeting for the month of September. I would like to call this meeting to order. The Norwood City School District Board of Education follows a bi-monthly meeting schedule. The first meeting of the month is called our committee meeting. At this meeting, we discuss fully our agenda for the board meeting to be held the third Thursday of each month. As board members, we encourage everyone to attend, watch, and listen to our committee meeting discussion, which results in action at the board meetings. For full disclosure, our committee meetings and board meetings are always announced, video and audio taped, as well as posted to our webpage for your view. All of our meetings are public and visitors are welcome. Mrs. Camphouse, please call the roll. Mr. Atwood. Present. Mrs. Cole. Present. Ms. Ballard. Present. Mrs. Raber is absent. Mrs. Rerica. Present. Would I like to ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next on our agenda is I'd like to make a motion to adopt our agenda for tonight as written unless anybody needs to make any changes so i'm making a motion to adopt tonight's agenda second. any discussion please call the roll mr atwood yes mrs cole yes miss ballard yes mrs Rerica. yes with our agenda adopted for tonight let's move on to 1.05 through 1.07 this is the minutes from our regular meeting on August 20th, 2020. Our minutes from our committee meeting on September 8th, 2020. And our minutes from the special board meeting on September 8th, 2020. I would like to make a motion that we adopt and approve those minutes. I'll second. Any discussion? <laughs> Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Atwood. Yes. Mrs. Cole. Yes. Miss Ballard. Yes. Mrs. Rerica. Yes. All right, with the minutes being passed, we'll move on to presentations. Uh, Superintendent Ronan. Thank you. We would. Sorry about that. Our presentation for tonight, we thought we would honor one of our employees as a rising star. And next month we'll start with our students. So the rising star that we are honoring tonight is Mrs. Michelle Pruitt. Norwood High School nominated her and would like to recognize Mrs. Pruitt for her hard work and dedication to the Norwood City Schools. She is in her 17th year working for the district as an educational aide. She began at Allison Elementary and has spent the last five years at the high school. Mrs. Pruitt is a positive staff member who goes above and beyond for all her students each and every day. No task is too small and she treats, treats each student as her own. Her positive attitude is contagious and she can be seen each and every day providing individual attention to students in need. The, her favorite part of her job is interacting and learning from her students. Mrs. Pruitt calls Norwood her home and raised two Norwood graduates, Jake from the class of 2015 and Emily from the class of 2017. So we're proud to call Michelle a part of our Norwood High family. Thank you. All right, thank you for the presentation and congratulations to uh, Mrs. Pruitt. Next, we'll move on to item number three, which is a discussion and on our agenda is 3.01. And this is a construction update 
for Williams Avenue Elementary, where we're going to be discussing uh, window options. So our next renovation project to be bid out is Williams Avenue Elementary. And the scope of work are estimates to replace the windows for the elementary building. It is not in the scope to replace the windows of the West Wing, the board office area. We have added the replacement of the West Wing windows as an alternate. Once we get the bidded cost to replace, we will, price, we will discuss the price versus the benefits of completing the window replacement for the board office side. As of now, I would like you to look at the pictures on our whiteboard and tell me of the two options, which one you prefer. This is an unofficial poll to give us direction moving forward in construction. The top picture shows our current windows. The second picture shows matching the windows with the elementary school window design. And the third picture shows replacing the windows but without the mullions. There's a slight savings without the mullions, but it's not um, significant enough to make any sway in our decision. So of the second and the third pictures, if we replace the windows at the board office side, would you prefer them with the mullions or without the mullions? So I would prefer them with the mullions because that's how it looks at Sharpsburg. Yes. And I think having some consistency with our buildings is important. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. if, it's, if it's a minor cost, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's well worth making sure that the buildings look similar. Okay. Are we able to request a, a bid for the primary building while they're bidding these windows for Williams? For Sharpsburg Primary? Yes. Yes. I figure if you get that many windows, usually they give you a better price if you get more in order. We will. We are going to ask, uh, um, we're going to put that out as an alternate on one of the projects. It would probably be with the Williams bid. But those windows are more constructual. They're, I can't explain it very well, but they're actually built into the building. It's not just a window that's been attached. So. I think that project is going to be quite a bit more expensive, but we certainly will ask for a bid on those. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so on those windows too, since those two buildings are attached and they're pretty close together, I think it would make sense to have the mullions so it looks more like the right side also. I agree. And are the mullions, um, you said it's more built in instead of attached, so is it a higher yeah. quality? Will it last longer? No, that's a different building. I was talking about Sharpsburg Elementary. Oh. These windows are, they're going to be fine to be replaced. They're, they're not going to be as constructual detailed, but it's just going to look better, I think, if the mullions are there so that it matches more with the building on the right with Williams Ele Elementary. So um, I, when I toured Sharpsburg Primary with Mr. Wessendorf a couple weeks ago, we went over and we looked at those windows because what they have now is they have the older style, smaller windows with the glass block up above. Mm -hmm. and, and right now the fear is, is that there's a metal sill plate that sits right above the glass block. And so they're afraid that if you cut into that sill plate, it's gonna, you know, have some structural integrity issues with the building. So they want to figure out how to mess with that right. before. So that may be, that's why they haven't been done yet is because they don't, they don't know how to quite address that. Right. So. I knew there was a difference, but I wasn't so sure I what it was. See the photos, but I'm the windows and the volumes are identical to those at Sharksburg? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah I, would, I agree with Brandon that having the buildings look the same would be fantastic. They look great on Sharpsburg. I think they'll look beautiful on Williams too. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Our bid will include mullions, mm -hmm. our alternate. All right. So if that's it for the discussion for Williams, we'll move on in our agenda to section four, and that's our educational committee report. Uh, Mrs. Rarica. Okay, it looks like we need to decide who we would like to send um, as a school delegate to the uh, OSBA Capital Conference. 
So the OSBA Capital Conference in every year prior to this year has been an in-person conference. So this would be sending somebody to Columbus for a couple of nights. Um, the last two years, um, Mrs. Ballard and I have been the delegates to go. Uh, this year, due to COVID, it's my understanding that the entire conference is virtual. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, we can all attend, I think, right. if we wanted to. I think to. everybody gets to go. I just went to the central one last night. Mm -hmm. Right. It was no biggie deal. Is there any issue with us just, because I know, you know, and I've seen other school districts send all of their board members to yes. Columbus. No, I would love to do that. The, this is the delegate, which I think you've done it before. It, it, you go a little early. Yeah. So I'm assuming you have to log in a little early and you're the official spokesperson for the board on what we want OSBA to focus on next year. Right. That's the only difference. So yeah, but it would be great to have all of our board there right. virtually. Does anybody have a passion to be the delegate for the virtual OSBA comp capital conference? It's always that first. Thank you. Did you Chris. hear that, Amber? Uh, no, I it's November 7th through the 10th. So would it be a it'd be a virtual schedule for those dates? I also would be happy, but I'm, I mean, if Amber wants to do it, I'd want Amber to do it. Right. Do you have a preference? No, I, uh, I, I don't want to be the delegate, but. Okay. All right. And I uh, know you like doing it too, right, Brandon? I've, I've, I've already done it. I've, I've done it twice. So I, it's fine with me to have somebody else do it this year to be the delegate. Um, Amber, if you want to be the delegate, okay. I'm, I'm okay with it if everybody else is okay with it. Yep. So I will, I will make a motion to nominate Amber Ballard as our OSBA delegate for the Capitol Conference. I'll second that. Do we need to name an um, and then if we, I'll also, uh, you know, include in that motion to name Alice Rerica as the alternate delegate. Perfect. I'll attend either way. Yeah. Right. You usually have a lot of really good breakout sessions. Really good. Yeah, I saw there are all kinds of really interesting things. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. And then with it being virtual, you know, all of our members can attend. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to try to find hotel accommodations. And you don't have to worry about <laughs> hotel accommodations. That is correct. Yay! So, okay. All right. So there's a motion on the table. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Atwood. Yes. Mrs. Cole. Yes. Miss Ballard. Yes. Mrs. Rerica. Yes. All right. Fantastic. So Amber, you are our delegate for the OSBA Capital Conference, with Alice being the alternate. <laughs> All right, uh, next, moving on in our agenda, uh, section five, which is personnel, uh, says superintendent recommendations, but I'm gonna take the first item on this list. Um, item 5.01 is a resolution to re-employ the treasurer. So this is something that we discussed at the committee meeting. Um, and something that we originally discussed back in June, but then we just kind of put it on the table with everything else going on. So now is the time that, that we really need to take this off of our table. So I would like to make a motion that we approve the resolution to re-employ our treasurer, Julie Camphouse. I'll second. Any discussion? I really appreciate Julie, and I'm really glad we're re-employing re, um, her. <laughs> I am too. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. So I, I will say that um, in, in the time that Julie's been here, our forecast has been spot on, like less than a half a percent off forecast from the Thank actual. You. I mean, it's it's really hard to do, and we're doing it, and you know that's fantastic. So. Thank you. 
So I have a motion on the table. And, Second. Yeah, and then we already discussed it, so we just did it again. Please call the roll. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Rerica? Yes. With that, uh, Mrs. Camphouse has been reemployed with the district. Thank you. Woohoo! Woo <laughs> and now I'll turn it over to Superintendent Rooney. Thank you, President Atwood. Numbers 5.02 is an MOU with the Nordwood Teachers Association regarding supplemental pay, and that is in the back of their contract, the various um, coaching positions are all listed. So this MOU adds a varsity women's wrestling coach position uh, to that supplemental contract, and we have to do an MOU because they collect, the bargaining agreement has already been approved Correct. and we're making changes. We also went back and separated out the, uh, the swim coach for a varsity and, and middle school because apparently, I guess a contract or two ago, it was put together as one uh, and we're getting it back to the way it was. Also, uh, we have supplemental, uh, we talked about supplemental contracts. You know, last spring we had a shortened season and not every, um, sport was played. So this is an agreement in terms of how we deal with that shortened season. If you, you know, so that's what that language is about. Okay, I would like to make a motion that we approve the MOU with the Norwood Teacher Association for supplemental pay. I'll second that. Is there any discussion on this? So I, I will say um, our district is being a trendsetter in the state as being one of the few districts that will actually have recognized women's wrestling as a separate sport. That's cool. So that is huge. Any other discussion? I tried to join the wrestling team 20 years ago <laughs> and I couldn't. So I am so, so happy, happy to see this moving forward. You have no idea. So, all right, any other discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Rerica? Yes. All right. All right, numbers uh, 5.03 are resignations and we've had several, but I did want to mention Novella Ford of a food service attendant for her many years of service and she is retiring. Now the next section, 5.04, this is a section where we are hiring a lot of coaches and class advisors for supplemental contracts in number one. And Jen, I'm so happy that Jen List is with us tonight. If you had any questions, she's joining us because our AD couldn't be here. Number two is avenues uh, for success and those are for club advisors for the before and after school programming. Let's see, number three, those are our school social workers extended time because they follow up with our families during the summer. Then number four, um, that is a replacement for a bed, uh, Ed Bowman who has left our employee. So Kenneth Fogus is uh, one of our newly hired maintenance leads. The next section, pupil activity contracts for our non-certificated staff. Again, it is our uh, coaches and class advisors. Number six, that is uh, security when we play at Shea and other various events. Number seven are changes, uh, it's a change of status for various people's position. Again, avenues for success And number eight. And number nine is a correction. We had the wrong school year listed on number nine for our football coordinator. So that is a correction. So that concludes uh, the employment section. All right, so I would like to make a motion that we approve 5.04 subsections one through nine as written in the agenda. A second. Is there any discussion on any of these people? Nope. Please call the roll. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. yes. Mrs. Rerica? Yes. All right, with that being passed, we're gonna move on to um, item number six in our agenda, 
which is the building and grounds report. Um, since Sally um, had a change in her work schedule and is unable to be here, and Amber is currently traveling on the road and unable to open this, um, I am going to do the, um, the request to use our facilities. So 6.01 is a request uh, to approve Children's Hospital Mobile Care Agreement. And 6.02 is um, Pastor Chuck Smith from Valley Church um, is wanting to use some space, the middle school parking lot. Excellent, President Atwood. That's a very exciting one. That's that farmers to families food distribution. Yes. Where they're actually going to pass out 25 bags of um, meat, uh, produce, and dairy products to families in Norwood, in including our families. And at the time this was put together, we did not have an actual date, but it is September 28th, and it will be from 4 to 7 p.m. in the middle school parking lot. Um, how are we? I, I think this would be great for us. Well, let me let me make the motion to approve these two items first. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to approve item 6.01, which is the Children's Hospital Medical Center Mobile Care Agreement, and 6.02, which is the Valley Church facility request. Amber has just seconded that there's a, motion. There's another attachment in here. Did you see that from? Oh, I, I can't, can't hear Debbie. Debbie. I'm not sure if the mic is connected or. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Cincinnati Country Day is also asked to use Shea Stadium for uh, a high school uh, playoff soccer game in October with the date and the time to be determined. So. So I'll, I'll amend my motion to include Cincinnati Country Day to use Shea Stadium for for a playoff soccer game. Um, are you okay? I'll still second. Okay, you'll still second. All right. So now, any discussion? So my original my original item here is I think this would be a great way to find some opportunity to um, partner to publicize this event since they are using our facility. I'm open to suggestions on how best we can do that. You're now talking about the Valley Church. I'm talking about Valley Church. Yeah, to the, publicize the, their event. What's that? To publicize their event. Yeah, because this is this is a great event. I mean, they're they're handing out food to families in Norwood. I've seen a lot on Facebook about it. Yeah. So, is would there be any issues if we put something like that on our Facebook page, just to kind of help promote that event? Because I think it's just good for the community. I'm sure. I'm sure we could do that. Yeah. We'll be glad to do that. Okay. Any other discussion about facility requests? No? Please call the roll. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Rerica? Yes. All right, now we come to the meat of the meeting, and this is our financial report for this month, which is quite lengthy. Um, this is Camp House. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. My CFO report, as well as, well as other financial reports and change order spreadsheets, are attached for your review and approval on 7.01. 7.02, temporary appropriations, our budget for the current year. 7.03, the certificate of substantial completion at Sharpsburg. We discussed this last at our last meeting. 7.04, the Warren County ESC. They provide special education services for qualified students of ours. 7.05, the complete care transportation. Just to, it's another vendor that helps provide transportation for our special education population. 7.06, the COOP strategies agreement. Again, this is the first step in acquiring additional funds for our renovation project that was hampered two years ago by debt limitations. 7.07, 7.08, and 7.09. Applied Behavior Services, a Stepping Stones Agreement, and St. Joe's Orphanage. These are all vendors that will provide specialized education services for our qualified students. 7.10, Broadband Ohio Grant. 
This is one of the new grants that we, we received for $55,558 to provide broadband um, connectivity to our students that don't have it. 7.11 purchase orders, uh, then and now purchase order for CTL engineering, PNC visa and Sprint. 7.12 donations, a nice donation from school outfitters of equipment worth over $6,000. 7.13, the HCESC Memorandum of Understanding to provide Head Start Preschool in our building. 7.14, um, purchase of additional desk shields that we talked about at our last meeting. This is retroactive to uh, September 8th. And 7.15, the Duke Energy Grant of Easement for VIEW. Um, so they, uh, Duke put in a new transformer at VIEW and this is, um, this is so that they can maintain it. They can come on our property and maintain it. And I put a vote box there. Um, I, think it's a good, I think it's a good stopping okay. point. Okay, good. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we approve items 7.01 through 7.15 as written in the agenda. I'll second. Is there any discussion? So a couple of things I wanna highlight in this first batch. Uh -huh. So in, in the very beginning, you know, we're talking about the certificate of substantial completion for Sharpsburg for century construction. Again, I know I've done this a couple of times, but I just want to highlight because I watch change orders very, very closely. Mm -hmm. And for a $6.2 million project, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're like what, $90,000 right. in change orders on a $6.2 million project? That mm -hmm. is fantastic. It is, it is. I mean, you don't see that very much. Um, just just to kind of compare it. Mm -hmm. So, and I know we're just in the beginning stages of VIEW, right? So the VIEW started just a couple of months ago. They've been going at Sharpsburg for almost a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. The change orders at VIEW are already at half that amount. Right. Oh, right. Dear. So, so how we control the cost at Sharpsburg, I mean, that was a fantastic job, but you know, I'm watching the change orders as we come. Right. Right, because we don't want to see that number grow because there's other things that we can use that money for if we can control those costs. That's right. Right, because we want to make that stretch. So in construction projects, change orders is where they get you. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. because you're under the gun. It's all of a sudden, oh, we didn't see this or we didn't know that. And it's going to cost you an extra X amount of dollars to get it done. And you're under the gun to say, okay, or or no. And it's, right. you know, it's, it's a lot of pressure. And it's a delay. Um, mm -hmm. So controlling those costs is, is tremendous. The other thing I wanted to bring up, um, 7.10, which is the new grant from Broadband Ohio. So this is something that we discussed at our committee meeting. So this is, this is a 55, almost $56,000 grant so that we can add broadband access for other people to use outside of our buildings mm -hmm. within close proximity. Mm -hmm. So here we're trying to, to make broadband for our community you know, something viable and something usable, which I think is, I think it's fantastic. And I'm really glad that we got that grant money. Um, the last thing that I wanted to highlight in this first batch is 7.14, which is the death shields. So we're purchasing an additional $60,000 of plexiglass. Um, so that a way we could get death shields in place before um, the end of the first quarter. Right. So. Those are the things I wanted to highlight in this. If anybody else has something else that they wanted to, to bring up. Are those desk, desk shields on schedule to come in? Yes, they'll be here next Tuesday. Wow. How long does it take to install those? I assume like, can they do that over the next weekend or will those be done in some phases at night? Yes, last time everyone pitched in and helped put them together because they do have to be screwed together and then adhered to the desk. So it'll have to be a group effort and the staff pitched in the last time. So that was very, very helpful. Mm 
All right, so we have a motion on the table. It's been seconded. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. And Mrs. Rerica? Yes. So then moving on to 7.16, the resolution to contract with Elevar Architecture Firm for Student Health Center and the resolution to proceed with the bidding of the project. So um, this process starts our health center project. After the bidding is over, we will bring the bids back to the board and you will approve the qualified vendor to the board for approval. So mm -hmm. we anticipate that being in our October meeting. The rest of them I left kind of separate because they're all uh, concerning property. No, no, that's fine. Okay. It's, yeah, no, that's good. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we approve 7.16, which is the resolution to contract with Elevar Architect Firm for the Student Health Center I'll and second. the resolution to proceed with bidding. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? No, I think the presentations that we've had on this project have been incredibly educational, and I'm looking forward to this project proceeding. Right. We're yes, hoping be good. Uh, by January we could actually have an opening if everything goes smoothly. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. This is Rarica. Yes. 7.17 Resolution of Urgent Necessity to High School PA System. So last week our PA system uh, went down at the high school. It is working now somewhat, but we're still pretty hesitant about how long it will continue to work. As you know, the PA system controls our fire alarm system our tornado system. Um, it's how we talk to our teachers and inform everybody what's going on in the building. So it's a crucial emergency safety system for our buildings. And um, if we have any other, any further issues with it, we want to go ahead and replace it. We anticipate that it's going to cost more than $50,000, which is once a construction project hits $50,000, we're obligated to bid it out. In addition to that, the replacement of this PA system was already built into our construction project for phase two of the high school. That being said, for me to pull it out legally from the construction project, we need to pass an, a, a resolution of urgent necessity, just saying that this is too important for us to wait till we can get bids on this construction project. Now, that being said, if we can get it fixed and move forward without replacing it, that's what we're going to do. But since we meet tonight, I wanted to make sure that we had this there so that we can get some quotes and get people in there next week if we have to, to replace it. So I'd like to make a motion that we approve 7.17, which is a resolution of urgent necessity for the high school PA system. I'll second. Any discussion on this? Okay, so here, this is really important because um, Passing a resolution of urgent necessity is not something that we should do routinely or lightly. That's correct. I mean, because we're bypassing, legally, we're bypassing the open bid process. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't go out and get our own quotes to try to use mm -hmm. the low cost for the benefit of the taxpayers, but it's not an open bid process. So this is a big deal. Um, especially when the item that you're looking at doing is in excess of fifty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why this is written into the Ohio Revised Code like this. That's correct. Having said all that, because this system is tied to our emergency system for the building, so we're talking about we're talking about the emergency alert system for the students and staff at the building. I am okay with this. This is the only reason. I am okay with this. If, if this was anything else, I, I wouldn't have even motioned to approve this. Right. And I just want to make that clear because we did one other urgent necessity motion mm -hmm. that in hindsight, I wish we hadn't have done. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is... And just so for our public that's watching knows, it takes a really long time to put the scope together and get something out to bid. 
So it could take us six months to get this portion bid out if we were to do it separately. And right. that's just way too long to wait for something this important. I, I agree. I agree because we're talking about our emergency alert system for the building, for our students and staff. You know, we might want to just go ahead and just fix it, mm -hmm. not try to band aid it, just fix it. Right. And, and we will. We certainly will. It, it's an old system, it's over 30 years old. It might be quite costly to fix it. We, we still don't know. It may not be able to be fixed. But if I have this urgent necessity resolution, we can do what's best moving forward. But we certainly will keep it part of the project if we can. Okay, so we're still getting quotes and we're still gonna do our due diligence to the taxpayers to make sure that exactly. we're using that money wisely. But this this is important. Does anybody else have anything else that they wanna say? She said it was in our budget to replace it for the high school anyway. So it's yes. just, it seems like to me, we're just doing it sooner. That's correct. But with the same money. Well, right? so the difference is the other way, it was part of an open bid process. Here, we're just going to go out and collect quotes on our own. So we're, we're gonna go out and solicit people to give us quotes instead of us just making an advertisement and people wanting to you know bid on the project. So the difference is, is us going out to them to find people to fix this versus us just advertising and saying, hey, we have a broken PA system, um, who wants to fix it? So if when we already approved for the high school bid or no? It's in phase two. We haven't so approved phase two. So it's not been two. done yet. We haven't approved it. So there isn't someone who's already offering. That's correct. Okay. We'll pull that off if we have to replace it before then. So my vote is if we're, if we're doing the urgent necessity, go ahead and fix it, mm -hmm. right? Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Atwood. Yes. Mrs. Cole. Yes. Ms. Ballard. Yes. Mrs. Rerica. Yes. And finally, the last in finance is 7.18, an addendum to the Tri-State Lease Agreement. This is just an update to further define our lease agreement and provide further protections for the district. I would like to make a motion that we approve item 7.18, which is the addendum to the Tri-State Planetarian Agreement. I'll second. Any discussion on this? Please call the roll. Mr. Atwood. Yes. Mrs. Cole. Yes. Mrs. Miss Ballard. Yes. Mrs. Rerica. Yes. All right. With that, that concludes the finance portion. We'll move on to section number eight, which is hearing of the public. And we do have some items for tonight's meeting. Um, so I'm going to read our policy on hearing of the public. Uh, to further improve the communication between the community and the board, time shall be allocated at each regular or special board meeting to hear public and or representatives of school-related organizations. Public participation at committee meetings is limited to those invited to speak on specific issues. Each person addressing the board shall fill out a form listing name, address, and the agenda or non-agenda item and hand the form to the board president each speaker will have five minutes to address the board. No more than 15 minutes will be devoted to any one topic unless a majority of the board votes to continue the discussion. Uh, speakers may offer such objective criticism of the school operations as concern them. However, the board will not hear any personal complaints of school personnel or complaints against any person connected with the district. Those concerns and comments about individuals should be brought to the attention of the administration separately. Um, and then we also have amended that to allow um, emailed comments to be read, which is what we have tonight. Um, so we have two emails that were sent to our public um, participation email account that did not make it in time for the special board meeting to be heard. So I think we should hear them now because they did take the time to send them in. 
So the first email was received on the evening of the special board meeting, but it did not come in until 8.55. And this email is from Gretchen. And it states, I have twins in the fourth grade at Sharpsburg. On the three days I have to help them, it is a nightmare. I don't know how the work is done anymore, so I'm teaching them the way I learned over 20 years ago. They are also only learning math and English on those days, and I still spend four plus hours a day with one kid because he has a learning disability. If they were in school, I believe they would learn more subjects and the way they are supposed to do things. They also get some social interaction at school. Not much though, but teacher support, which they are not getting on their three days at home with me. And that is signed Gretchen. And then an email that was received on September 15th. This is from Mary Canada. She says, hello, my name is Mary. I have two sons, 16 and 11. My 16 year old attends Scarlet and my 11 year old is at Williams, both doing hybrid two days a week. As I am okay with two days a week, I do not think students should return to five days a week. Right now there are 11 students in my 11 year old's class and social distancing is at six feet, which is great. And the number of positive cases are down in Norwood, which is also great. And I would like for it to stay that way. So I think we should continue with two days in person for a while. Everyone needs to take into consideration that you start adding more kids to the classrooms, the amount of social distancing goes down. So going back to five days there will at least be double the amount of kids in class and three or four feet social distancing isn't acceptable. There are also other families like mine where some kids attend Scarlet and some Norwood. So the ones in Scarlet are around people from other areas where cases may be higher. I have already gotten a call for a student tested po testing positive at Scarlet. Thank God they weren't around anyone during the contagious period, according to them. Heck, I thought if you, heck, sorry, <clears throat> my contacts are dry. Heck, I thought if you uh, are contagious. I understand it is difficult for some parents who have to work or have children who just do better with in-person learning. And while education is important, the health of students and staff is the most important thing. I hope everyone on the school board doesn't see COVID and wearing masks and six feet social distancing as a political thing. And if you all do, that you leave it out while making these decisions that ultimately affect my children and other children as well as staff. Numbers are down. Let's not do anything that could cause a setback like throwing more kids in class and having less social distancing. And remember parents work and most don't keep their child won't keep their child home when they are sick because of that. I'm asking for the health of our kids. Let's continue with the hybrid a while longer, not just till the end of October. Let the cases continue to drop. My kids have lost their grandma due to COVID and multiple family members have it and still have some issues from it like pneumonia or just tightness in their lungs. We have two cousins and their spouse as well as an aunt and an uncle who have it right now. My aunt and uncle who have it really bad are using a breathing machine at home because they aren't getting enough air. This is a very serious illness and I fear every day because my oldest is pre-diabetic and my dad who lives with us have COPD and me and my husband also have underlying health issues. Please let's keep everyone healthy by staying hybrid. Thank you. All right, those were all the items for public comment for this meeting. With that, we'll move on to section nine in our agenda, which is the report section. 9.01 is board announcements. Does anybody have any board announcements? So I would just like to announce that in a, in a conversation with Mrs. Rarica um, earlier, so the city of Norwood has received um, some CARES Act funding money. Um, however, um, they may have some difficulty in figuring out ways to spend all of those dollars. Um, we have, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Mrs. Camphouse, but gone through all of the available funding or just about uh, from the CARES Act that we have received to date. That's correct. So it is entirely legal and if the city wants help and assistance in figuring out how to do this, they have the ability to transfer those funds directly to the school district to allow us to use it for pandemic related expenses. 
So, so Brandon? Yes. Uh, it is my understanding that the city is using at least a portion of that money to purchase an additional ambulance, so that way they can have two in rotation with one down, and that would have all of us up to date with newer vehicles beyond 2018. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure how much of the budget uh, that takes up at all, but I just want to make sure if you weren't aware that is something I think the city decided on last night. Yeah. So the the, the thing is 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 a. It's my understanding that that may not that may not encompass their entire budget. So if they have extra dollars left over from that, this is a use it or lose it. So they, they can't you know pigeonhole it away into an account and just sit on it. Um, so if if the city does have extra money left over, we will take it and we will use it, and they are allowed to give it to us. And if they need help uh, trying to figure that out, um, we can help them. And we can send them Julie. That is correct. I think they are under the impression that they are not allowed to give it to the school, but they they can, right. and we we can help them with that. Yep, we can. Very lovingly, we can help them. Absolutely. Eagerly. <laughs> any any other board announcements? All right. Next item on the list is nine point zero two, which is the superintendent's report. Thank you, President Atwood. I have two items. I wanted to make sure that everyone knows the beautiful new electronic sign for our high school was installed this week so we can post all the great events that are happening or will happen when the pandemic is open. So we have the old and our new sign, a picture of both. And I do want to thank um, the previous classes who obviously, you know, that they donate money as a senior gift. So we went through those accounts and the monies that were left, we were able to put together and purchase this great new sign. So a big thank you for the classes of 2014, 15, 16, 17, and 18 that made this possible. And the second item is, we have some of our Norwood students in the news. So I have a positive story about our young people. You can see Abby Green and Jasmine Madden and several other 10th graders being interviewed by WCPO about pot and as, as part of PIP, which is Positively Influencing People and Teens Empowering Community Change. They are working with community members, the city and other organizations to bring back the waterworks uh, basketball courts to give people a safe place to play and make memories. We believe that the segment is going to run tomorrow on Channel 9, and it's just great to highlight our young people engaged in improving our community. So thank you to our grade 10 students and also to Glenna Edwards, who is back there, who I know was also at the event and provided the great pictures. And that concludes my report. Fantastic. Thank you, Superintendent Ronan. Um, 9.03 is the Norwood Community Television Board report. That is myself, and this month I have nothing to report, so everything is running smoothly with Norwood Community Television. They do a fantastic job. 9.04 is the OSBA Legislative Liaison and Ohio Legislative Report, Mrs. Rarica. Okay. Governor DeWine has signed House Bill 606, and that bill prohibits the bringing of any civil action for damage for injury or death or loss to person or property against schools and a bunch of others, but I'm just gonna mention schools because that's what we talked about, if the cause is due to exposure to COVID-19. Also, there is um, Senate Bill 358, which is being discussed right now, so they're not voting on it yet, but this bill has a lot of things in it that are about ed choice. In different places that I look, it lists all sorts of things that are on this bill, but I'll just tell you, it involves a lot of stuff with ed choice. And um, they, they would like people to come and testify for this. So um, if we wanna go do that, we could, like we did in January. Um, anything else interesting? Um, there's a pack called Kids Pack, which I've probably mentioned before, but it never bears. Uh, uh, it isn't bad to repeat it over and over. It's called Kids Pack. 
PAC, and that is the pack that supports public schools. And if anybody wants to donate to it, um, it's called Kids Pack, and you can look that up online. So House Bill 358, I, I was hoping that they would keep a choice out of that and separate because there's that's a big bill and there's a lot mm -hmm. in it. Yep. There's a lot of there's a lot of good in it, and then they go and throw that in it, which right. completely turns it from something that should happen, in my mind, to something that shouldn't happen. Um, so I, I may go back up to Columbus to testify. Yeah, I wouldn't mind finding out what exactly should we say we want, we don't want, and then go and do like we just did in January. Sure. I would love to. Yeah. It was great. And now I know which door to go to. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, 9.05 is the avenues for success report. Mrs. Raber is, is currently not here. Um, so we'll skip that and move on to item 10 in our agenda, which is uh, approval of future meetings. Do I not have a report tonight? Uh, it wasn't on the list. I'm sorry, I, I apologize. <laughs> it wasn't on the agenda, Amber, but um, we'll go ahead and add that 9.06, which is the Great X report, uh, Mrs. Ballard. <laughs> Okay, um, well, uh, for our OATS report, um, we are on track with our construction plans. Um, we are actually getting lower bids than we're planning, so we're under budget and on track, which is amazing, as we know with, with our own process here. Um, we got our official enrollment numbers back for the year so far. We have 2,920 students enrolled in the OATS overall, uh, which continues our positive trend, seven years consecutive of increased high school enrollment. Um, we also got our College Credit Plus courses expanded this year, and we have 368 students com uh, completing College Credit Plus for fall semester. Uh, 127 of those are online, and 241 are in person on campus. Um, we also expanded our University of Cincinnati partnership by creating new early IT programming for our students through Live Oaks, um, as well as through a couple of our other existing programs already at other campuses. Um, and we received a $25,000 grant through TechSol to help us grow our technology programs as well. Um, a lot of big moves this year with our opening of our health complex for our teachers and staff to take advantage of at Scarlet Oaks. Um, and we just completed a renovation of our cosmetology program at Scarlet. So for any students looking to maybe go into cosmetology, you have a brand new entire wing to take classes in. Um, and that completes my Oaks report. All right, thank you. Great things happening at the Oaks. Um, with that, now we'll move into um, section 10 of our agenda, which is approval of future meetings. Um, at our last meeting, we had originally approved October dates for um, the 6th and then the following Thursday. Um, since October is one of the months where the first comes on a Thursday or, or Wednesday or whatever, um, that means that um, we meet really early in the month for both the committee and the board meeting. Um, we also have one of our uh, members that's going to have a medical procedure um, occurring on the 6th. And, and so I think it's important, especially for that particular committee meeting, um, that we try and have as many people present. And with it being so early in the month, um, moving everything back one week, so the, having the committee meeting on the 13th and then the board meeting the following Thursday on the 22nd, it really doesn't impact anything as far as decisions relating to the end of the quarter. Um, but it also gives us a little bit more time to just kind of watch and, and gather data so that we can make the best decision possible moving forward. If we need to make any changes or additional decisions moving forward. So with that, I'd like to motion that we 
um, have our next committee meeting on October 13th at 5.30 here in the gymnasium and the regular board meeting the following Thursday, October 22nd, again here at the gymnasium. I will not be present for the board meeting. I will be here for the committee meeting, but I will not be present. I'll be virtual for the board meeting on the 22nd. I can do those dates. Um, I just want to make sure that folks know, like, so this meeting moved. Um, I wasn't actually asked or notified that this meeting had been moved because obviously I'm very out of town at the moment. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that if, if we are moving meetings like that again, that we at least receive a text message. Uh, I, I appreciate moving it during a meeting when we have a chance to discuss it. The last one was moved with no discussion. All right. Well, we, so I have a motion. Did anybody second that? I'll second. Okay. And then Amber commented about um, discussion moving of moving meetings. Any other discussion? Did, did she, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear her well. Did she say she wasn't notified? I thought we got an email. There was an email sent out. Okay, so she said. So it came as an attachment to the original date of notification for the being on the 17th. And that comment got lost in the comments. So I never received a text message saying, hey, are you available next week? Um, there was never a discussion about moving it to this week, um, which was obviously a little stressful for me because I'm trying to move across the country today. Um, so I'm just saying make sure that if we do have to do a notification via email that it's its own separate message that it's very clear and that the board members are notified through a secondary option because I showed up at the high school last week because I never saw that reply line in the email. So I will take that on as, as an action item for myself to make sure that that happens from now on. So I'll make Much sure. Much appreciated. Yeah, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take that action. I will also take responsibility for that not happening, Amber. Did you hear that? Uh, I did. I heard some music. Oh, no, I, I said I said I will take responsibility for you not having that secondary notification for that. And I'll, I will make sure from now on um, any other um, things that come up like that at the last moment or or in between meetings that everybody yeah. gets notified in a, in a secondary manner. I'll, I'll take ownership of that action item. That would be very helpful when we get a chance to discuss it like we are now i put it in my calendar but when that original email usually gets sent to 17 different people and some people reply thank you and you know it just kind of gets lost when it's as a reply line okay fair enough I agree with that. thank you any other discussion please call the roll mr atwood yes mrs cole yes miss ballard Yes. Mrs. Rerica. Yes. All right, with that, that brings us to item number 12 in our agenda, which is adjournment. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Everybody seconds it. <laughs> Any discussion on adjourning? Please call the roll. Mr. Atwood. Yes. Mrs. Cole. Yes. Ms. Ballard. Yes. Mrs. Rerica. Yes. All right, we're right at one hour. Thank you all. We're adjourned. <laughs>